Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning. Welcome to the Town of Portland Board of Education podcast. And we are live in the studio with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Charles Britton. And it's a blustery Monday morning. Uh, good morning, Charles. Good morning, David. Are you feeling a little tired today? We lost an hour of sleep last night. I know. Weekend, right? I know. My God. It's, uh, you know, between that and retirement is figuring out what time it is, what day it is, and, <laughs> and so It'll forth. It'll all blend together for you. But, you know, spring ahead. I thought they were there was talk about not having daylight savings time anymore. I don't know where that ever ended up. Yeah, but. I mean, I don't know if if they actually do daylight savings time out in uh, you know Texas and, and Nevada way. I'm not I'm not sure yeah. whether you know whatever, but yeah. I don't know. That, <laughs> that popped up on Facebook a couple of times. Are we still doing daylight savings yep. time? And so everybody's forth. a little bleary eyed today. Kind of like what? But it's nice. Days are longer now. It was, yes, it was dark getting up this morning, but you know we'll have the the sunlight until you know six thirty seven o'clock, yep. which is great. Spring, exactly. Spring sports. You there know you go. all the things that are going to be happening are, are it's finally time. I think we only have like. 11 days of winter left, right? And something like that. Spring and is spring here. is, uh, spring, oh, uh, spring's eternal or something like yeah, that. It, or in like a lion, out like a lamb right now. There, there you go. Well, that's it for sure. Hey, yeah, we got March Madness coming up. March and, Madness, you know, yeah. And hopefully the, uh, the Yukon girls and guys, uh, they you know. look good. Oh, man, they look oh, real good. Oh, man, they're good. Fantastic. So, anyway, so tell us what's happening in the system. Um, a lot, lot of great things. You know, March, March in the life of any educator, as we all know, is a long month. Yes, it um, is. We don't, it's not broken up by much. Um, although I will say, I have to you know recognize some folks. Last Friday we had our, our PD day, so students had a yep. long weekend, mm -hmm. and um, we let all put all the teachers hard to work in the morning, learning new reading programs and doing all kinds of things. Yep. But but in the afternoon, um, we did some things for our faculty called wellness activities. Oh, right? okay, and. Um, you know, we let them do things um, to, just to kind of take care of themselves. Uh, yep. But we had some people. Um, Mike Pelton opened his uh, studio and did some self-defense classes. Ah, okay, yeah, cool. I have to give a shout out to Cody Golf who let us use their simulators. Um, Corin Restore in town here um, did some hot yoga for our teachers. Nice. And, you know, just a good way to spend a Friday afternoon after you know long hard. Day of work, just kind of kind of get back to your, your sense of self and, and uh, rejuvenate, yourself, physically rejuvenate. So to everybody who ran the wellness activities and certainly Mike and Corn Restore and, and Cody Golf, thank you. Um, awesome. Great way to recognize teachers, um, give back a little. We, we appreciate that for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, that's nice. That's a nice release. For sure. And, you know, March, it can be also um, a big time for our students. We have our spring musical coming up. March yes. 22nd, 23rd, yep. Friday, Saturday. Get your tickets now. Yes. Great. They are available online, I believe. Absolutely. I'm get them right on the website. And even if you don't have kids in the show, great date night. Affordable date night, right? Yeah, absolutely. So take grab your significant others and kids and come on out it's matilda it promises to be awesome our kids never uh, fail to impress um march 25th our juniors are taking the sat so that's a that's a big day big milestone yep our seniors are all learning where they may be going next yes. year so yep. acceptances are coming out um otherwise it's 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 a great time of year I've, i i literally just came from a fifth grade class at uh brownstone to pop in here and Watching our teachers teach and our students learn every day, it's just, it's remarkable. Yes. We're, we're in a really good place. Well, um, you know, I think we have uh, an excellent staff. You know, the teachers staff, are, yeah. are, are engaged. Uh, and I think, you know, uh, yeah, just to compliment our, our excellent education system here in the town of Portland. It's know? a great, it's a great school district. Um, you know, I, I can't say enough about it. I've worked in a lot of different ones. Yep. Um, this is a this is a great place to be. Um, yeah. it, 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 there are so many positive things happening every day in the schools. Um, we don't. It's not perfect, you know. There, where there is no Lake Wobegon, but we're pro probably about as close as it, it gets. Well, <laughs> you know, and surprisingly for the size district we are, and a, you know, prime mm -hmm. example of that is the high school. Okay, yeah. look at, you know, the 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 amount of participation in the high school musical. I think you've got. You know, probably about eighty-five percent of the school that's mm -hmm. involved in that uh, show, one way or another, one between another. you know, exactly. show, tech, uh, performers, musicians, and so forth. So it's 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 uh, you know, it's an engaging school, and you know, the students really uh, step up and engage themselves and participate. So yeah, it's our, cool. And the kids work hard. That it, it amazes me how many activities our kids are in, and, and sports, and things going on in the community, and you know, ever everything. It's it. 
I don't say enough nice things about about kids uh, these days, but they they work really hard. You yes. Know? Um, and I see them. You know, they're up really early in the morning. Sure. Uh, rigorous studies all day, and then you know they're not going home after school. And no, some have part time jobs. They work at the Dunkin' Donuts. They work at uh, Adams. They work, you know, every place. Adams. You know, volunteering, sure. working, sports, clubs, activities, musical band. Um, they're great. It's it's what it's all about. And um, you know, I have a lot of hope for the future because of how hard these kids are working and and how invested they are in developing themselves. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Now, what what's on tap for spring sports so far this year? I mean, for the spring, what's what's oh, going yeah. on? You got uh, baseball, softball, tennis, yep. um, uh, uh, the track, um, uh, a lot of things. The one sport we don't have here in Portland is uh, lacrosse. Okay. Um, but just about everything else is available to the kids either on the Portland High School or the middle school teams, or we do a lot of co-oping okay. um, with, with area schools. And sometimes they co-op with us. But, of course, the big one for um, us, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the golf golfers this yes. year. Yes. Well, we got a, a oh, strong yeah. team. yeah, strong team. They are um, – I don't want to say unstoppable because, you know, that would be never say us never. And knocking on wood <laughs> here. Um, but they, they have some remarkable golfers on that team and an amazing coach. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're, they are ones to watch. This well, year. we were state champions last year, weren't no, we? Like last four years in like, a row. Okay. They're well, a juggernaut. Yeah. They're a juggernaut. Well, considering that we're, we, we live in Portland where we have three golf courses. Yeah. We have Chris Cody's Chris indoor golf. driving yeah. range, yeah. outdoor driving range, simulators, the whole nine golf yards. Golf capital of Connecticut. Right exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I like to go. I, I make it a point to get out. Um, with that team at least once a year and, and I just walk along like I just want to watch <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, occasionally I'll swing a club every now and then but just to watch these guys uh, sure. do what they do you know the the sound the ball makes when it hits their club it's like a firecracker that's it's, it uh, re remarkable it just jumps off the club yeah. well so, well speaking of golf okay uh obviously we have our exchange club golf tournament coming up uh and the we have our town tech booth out on the fourth hole oh, that we okay. collect for our jason fide scholarship so i hope you guys can get, put a foursome together i would love to okay on the uh it's may 2nd May okay, second, okay. which is it's it's uh, going to be on a Thursday this year. It's normally on a Friday, but it's going to be on a Thursday this year. So, hopefully, you can uh, muster up a foursome because uh, uh, we're going to challenge you. All right, you don't have to twist my arm. That sounds great. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'd love to you know, get a group out there. So anyway, but that's that's excellent. Um, you know, I think the other thing too. Now, I, I heard rumors now I, I, every now and then. Is is there um, a pickleball court in the works, or is oh, there, right. there talk about that? Yeah. Or so that's a good point. So there, the um, tennis courts at the high school are going to be lined for pickleball. Now, when I say lined, I don't know if they're going to be painted or taped. Okay. But e either way, they're okay. going to be set up for pickleball, and then we're going to get. Um, these nets that you can just move portable nets. portable nets oh okay yep. um that's in the works okay that cool in the works so come on up play some pickleball take a walk on the new track yes it's oh. a, a a great great community asset great resource the only thing is we ask people not to use it during the school day yeah um and then of course if we have practices going on out there um wait till those are over but weekends evenings come on come on over and and you know get in get some exercise in well typically um i, I take advantage of the track every morning at five o'clock and know, do my I mile heard. up there and and so forth and it, it was windy up there oh, this morning man, yeah, and it was like you know my gosh unbelievable so uh what else is happening now i we we now have is there a uh, facilities committee now uh, right. which uh, kind of spawned off the uh facility study how did that work yeah so several things are in the works now um, on the town side, there is a committee that is formed that is a uh, municipal land use committee. It's uh -huh. title is, and, uh, they've been tasked with, Hey, figuring out if, and hopefully maybe when, um, uh, Gildersleeve and Brownstone were to be decommissioned as schools. Yep. Yep. What would they become? Okay. Right. And, you know, I attended their first meeting the other day and, exactly what you would expect to happen, which was um, ideas popping, you know, like requests for information. I know they went on a tour of the buildings. They're looking at the site study analysis, both of them that we had done. Yep. But there are so many potential opportunities um, for that. Now, that's certainly not my lane. <laughs> that's a lane for the, the town to have to consider. But, you know, we know that before 
um, any ask of the community in terms of bonding for um, facilities, uh, the community would want to know what would happen to those. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so that's that work is underway. On my side of the equation, uh, I have in my possession now a blocking diagram okay. of what a pre-K-5 um, Valley View would look like. Okay. Um, we're doing traffic studies. Well, I should say this. We're not doing a formal traffic study, but we have lots of questions about traffic patterns and schedules and lunches and, and um, how the, the, the building would work ergonomically, logistically, practically. Yep. And out of that blocking diagram and a 3D model we're going to get from Fire Architects, okay. a lot of those questions are going to be answered. Mm-hmm. Literally just by looking at the blocking diagram, you can see how the architects have considered um, those questions that we know are out there. Okay. In addition to that, I have a team of educators here visiting other pre-K-5 schools that are the same size as Valley Views would be. Okay. Right. And the goal of that sort of data gathering or, or research process is to collect things like their staffing profiles, their schedules, how they run um, their specials, you know, what how the building works. Mm-hmm. M- my hope is that as soon as we have the blocking diagram, the 3D model, feedback from the committee that's gone out and visited schools similar in size mm-hmm. to what a pre-K-5 value would be, and the most important piece of data, which we're still waiting for, which is how much, right? Right. How much it would cost 49% of the total for the town of Portland, and then the 51% from the state. State, right. Once all of that is together, um, you can expect I'll be having a big reveal, right? Okay. There'll be a, uh, likely a presentation for the community, okay. a presentation for the Board of Education, and I may even run some more focus groups okay. to invite people in to discuss it and, okay. and ask questions, raise concerns. Mm-hmm. Um, that, I expect, will have all of that data and inf- information, I'm hopeful, sometime around the beginning of April. So okay. two or three weeks from right sure. now. Yeah. So we can spend April and May uh-huh. um, sharing the information with the community and getting feedback. Okay. The Board of Education would be obligated to vote to approve what's called the education specifications plan, okay. which is all of that, mm-hmm. right? And then, of course, the Board of Selectmen would need to um, authorize a bonding referendum. Correct. The hard deadline that we have is that by June 30th of this year, if the community is still in favor of this, mm-hmm. I have to submit by June 30th an application to the state of Connecticut yep. to ask for the 51% reimbursement. Okay. If we missed that June 30th deadline this year, yeah. we'd have to wait till June, June 30th next year. Next year, yeah. So the way it would line up would be April, May, share with the community all of the information we have. June 30th, submit that um, a grant application to the state mm-hmm. to get the 51% reimbursement. Okay. November bonding referendum okay and then we'd learn by december if the if the bonding referendum passed and we had the the state grant money in place we would then be in position to spend um from december of next year on and then all of the year after we're working with architects hiring construction mm-hmm. companies and getting ready so that the year after that okay right, sort of not next year not the year after but the year after that then we'd be ready to move some students around and start in earnest um, with, a, constru- with a construction project. Now, now the criteria for the state funding now you, it would have to be you have to renovate as new. Is that how that uh, mm-hmm. criteria goes? Now, the, the scenario goes if we, uh, and again, according to the studies, uh, we would be decommissioning Gildersleeve, correct? And, and Brownstone. And Brownstone, yeah. okay. And that's what, the, the, the question you just asked there is so important for people to hear, mm-hmm. right? Is that why why are you considering this? Well, part of the answer is well, there's a, a tremendous academic value yep. in having all of our kids in one building, teaching and learning wise, it might it makes sense. Yep. But fiscally, it makes sense. Sure. This is a win-win. Yeah. Because it is so expensive 
to run three schools. Oh, absolutely. You You're need yeah. all the staffing yeah. and overhead. To Administrative run three staff, the custodial staff, everything else. Yeah. And in addition, we know that Valley View, Brownstone, and Gildersleeve need somewhere in the order of seven to nine million dollars each mm -hmm. because they're falling apart. Yeah. Like, if anybody doesn't believe me that they're falling apart, give me a call and I'll give you a tour. Yeah. If you were to say, let's round up and say eight, nine million, right? So somewhere in the neighborhood of 21 to 27 million dollars is how much each of those schools need yeah. over the next 10 years mm -hmm. to keep going. Like just yes, to, yes. They're, they're struggling. Keep, keep their head above water, so to speak. If the town were to do that, that's all capital improvements and subject to very little state reimbursement. Right. Somewhere in the neighborhood of $2 million for roofs and ADA compliance things yep. mm -hmm. is what we get from the state. So all of it would be on the property taxpayers. Yeah. Right. Which is why the renovate to new and add new to Valley View makes sense because then you're essentially doubling your money mm -hmm. with state reimbursement. Right. And once you build new, you know, hey, you're set for 20, 25 years. Yes, right? yes. I mean, that's the thing. Is look to the high school. Yeah, exactly. The high school, middle school opened in 2004. Okay. 20 years later now, we're starting to see some wear and need to do some work on it. Sure, yeah. But for 20 years, that's a pretty good ROI. Yeah. That's a it, good return on your investment. Exactly. You didn't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to keep it going once sure. it's new. It's like you get a new car. It's under warranty. Yeah, exactly. Right? You get that 100,000 mile guarantee or so warranty. So part of what anybody who's listening to me, and, and I hope people would invest the time to listen to these podcasts or get the information, who might be out there crabbing yeah. that we can't afford this, it's too expensive. My answer is simple. You can't afford not to. Yeah. yeah. If you're really concerned, if you're not concerned about the quality of education, fine. Mm -hmm. You may not have kids. You may not care about public education. You may not even think public education is necessary. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If you're only concerned about the dollars and cents and the impact on your mill rate, this is what you need to do. Yeah, exactly. So anybody on Facebook out there crabbing that this is too expensive, <laughs> give me a call. Yeah. In educate yourself mm -hmm. and let me explain to you why this is the most cost effective thing to do for the long run because you're getting a product that will be lasting for a long time and you're saving over 20 years many millions of dollars in staffing and overhead sure. costs by reducing schools sure it's a no-brainer man well not not to mention yeah you mentioned it 2004, that's when the high school, middle school, you know, mm -hmm. uh, since 2004, you know, uh, you know, you, you look at the amount of students that have gone through that school. We've gone through COVID. I mean, not to mention a lot of the HVAC requirements that are required now oh, post COVID. I mean, those, those things cost money. You know, when you're, you know, you have to improve the number of air turns in the rooms and so forth. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it costs it, money. It, it, it's pathetic right now, Dave. Our only HVAC in three of our schools is an open window with a fan in them. Yeah. Anybody who thinks that that's acceptable has lost their mind. <laughs> We now, what do you, what, how hot does it get in this world now? Like, yeah. you are not living in reality. No. If you think that because it was okay when I was there, it should be okay now. Times are different now. Yes, absolutely. And then the other thing I just want to mention, I know, I know there are a lot of people in the community who are concerned about kids and teaching and learning, not so much the dollars and cents, mm -hmm. although everybody shares that concern. Yep, yep. But one group of people out there that I hear you loud and clear is concerned about how does a pre-K-5 school, a large school work? Mm -hmm. I'm worried about lunch waves, how, how kids move through buildings. Is it appropriate to have fifth graders and kindergartners in the same room? How much traffic is there going to be? Just keep an open mind. Sure. Just listen. Well, we ran through that X scenario when we, we combined yep. the middle school and the high school. Yep. And I'm going to show you. I'm not going to ask you to think hypothetically about this. Over the coming weeks, you will see the schedules. You will see the renderings. Just keep an open mind. Yeah. Yeah. And trust me when I tell you this. There are many, 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 many school districts in Connecticut that have pre-K-5 schools and are highly successful. Sure. Now, you don't have to take me at my word. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to lay it out there for everybody. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm hopeful that if people go into this and listen with open minds and open hearts, yep. it will address many of the concerns about a large school and it will address many of the concerns about affordability. Sure. And hey, you don't have to agree with me. Just well, I'll hear your concerns. You, you hear what I show you. And ultimately, the, at the end of the day, Board of Education have to take a position. Board of Selectmen have to take a position. And the nicest thing, the thing we love about democracy, mm -hmm. which is why we will defend it with our lives, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Is that at some point, the voters of Portland will make get the decision. In. They get, you will, it's not, this isn't a Charles Burton decision. Yeah, yeah. This is a town of Portland decision. Exactly. And I will give all of the information as transparently and honestly as I can. Yeah. And then people will get to vote. Sure. Right. And hopefully that opportunity to vote will never be taken away from us by any crackpots out there. No, well, exactly, exactly. And that's what this country's built on. You that's know, what American, it's built on. And democracy. that's what made January 6th so terrifying. Yes, yes. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, that's it. That's in the past and hopefully it stays in the past. It stays but, in the past. That's I mean, our obligation. But, then, but yep. there's still out people out there that uh, are say that it, it, it wasn't an insurrection. But, they are, they are unpatriotic. Know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So anyway, but that's that's great. Now, um, now the, the the town survey is done. I think we did the the yep. site survey. That's that's done. That's mm -hmm. been uh, completed. Um, the town survey has uh, coordinated with that yep. as yep. far as that goes. And you know, from what uh, we had on the town survey, there was uh, pretty significant numbers on on return on investment on doing the survey. Right. And and look at that. And, and it's from that survey that we've heard loud and clear. What, what do people want before they're comfortable with this? Yeah. They want to, A, know what would happen to decommissioned schools. Yeah. What would happen to Gildersleeve and Brownstone if they're decommissioned? Mm -hmm. B, they want to know, how does a pre-K-5 school work? We like small schools. It's a small town. We yeah. want our kids loved and safe. Yeah. How, would a, a, how would you create a sense of community in a larger school? And then C, how much is it going to cost and why is this the most cost-effective thing to do? Mm -hmm. Those are the three things we've heard. The loud and clear message received. Yep, we're working on those, and we'll have we'll have responses. We'll, sure, we'll share that information with people, and then people can render their own decision and vote their conscience come November. Mm -hmm. And hey, if we end up with a new school because that's what the town wants, wonderful. Yeah. If not, we will we will tack. We will adjust. We will. Res we, we are sensitive to the will of the voters. Sure, that's yeah. again what makes this such a unique and, and important process. Absolutely, absolutely, it's fantastic. Uh, all right, anything else that we need no, to? That's to it, Dave. Well, to, Charles, I, I want to um, on the record, I want to thank you and the whole Board of Education oh, for, for, for participating and, and uh, retirement party. Yeah. Uh, my retirement party was. Uh, I was house, Steve. It was. We had over 150 people there. Um, and I was overwhelmed. Um, the amount of love that was in the room and, and so forth was unbelievable. And I appreciate uh, you coming out and uh, sharing the night with me. It was awesome. It was our pleasure. Great to hear about you and see all the friendships you've made. The, the venue and the food was terrific, and it was a memorable night. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. was that I'll, I'll always cherish for sure. So anyway, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that I think concludes this episode of the Town of Portland Board of Education podcast. We are again live here in our... Uh, New Digs, New our dig. Connecticut Valley School of Music podcast studio uh, at Connecticut Valley School of Music. And uh, Charles, thank you so much. And uh, we'll catch you a couple, three weeks, four weeks down the road, and yeah, we'll, so do, we'll do another one. We've got to do this. If we, when we do it in April, I'll be able to talk about all the things with actual. I won't even be able to talk about it. I'll be able to show. So I'm glad we're on. A, have some visuals here. Hopefully I can. Fantastic. We can do this in a forum where people aren't just hearing my voice or seeing my face, but actually seeing what a pre-K-5 Valley View might look. There you go. All right. Charles, thanks so much. Thanks, Dave. And again, thank you, uh, listeners. And uh, stay tuned for our next episode of the Town of Portland Board of Education podcast with our uh, superintendent of schools, Dr. Charles Britton. So thank you, Charles. Thanks, Dave. All righty. That is all. Mm -hmm.